Hello and welcome to the Bees and Yarn podcast. My name is Orly. I am a knitter and crocheter living in Australia. And if you're new to the podcast, then a huge hello and welcome. This is a fortnightly knitting and crocheting podcast where I basically just chat to you about all of the things that I've been working on over the last two weeks. Um, it has been school holidays in the last couple months, or over the last January, December kind of period. So I think my uploading times have been a little different to usual and admittedly this year is looking to be quite quite busy um, in all of my commitments so I'm not entirely sure when uploading will be but I will still try to aim for two weeks um, between each episode and then I might just need to skip a week here and there when I have exams. If you're a returning viewer, um, firstly, thank you for coming back. It really means a lot to me. Um, and secondly, you'll notice that I've moved locations again. <laughs> um, this is not something I plan to do every episode. Um, I mean, I think it would be a fun, fun, you know, way to incorporate some variety, but I think it would be a little bit frustrating for the viewer and also just quite time consuming for me. However, I originally was filming in my room, which I explained a couple episodes ago was a bit difficult for me because it was kind of tucked in a corner and I couldn't really get out of the corner because I had to have a chair with about 15 billion books. And I mean, I, I'm really not exaggerating. It was a lot of books on that chair to then prop up my filming device at the time. And then like, yeah, it just wasn't really working. Um, since then, I tried filming in the living room, which is where I am now, but on the couch. The issue with that that I found was that while I really liked that I could have a clean kind of background, it wasn't very busy, um, which was something also I felt like the background in my bedroom with my desk was a little bit too much. I worked out that because the windows are behind me, because of where I was sitting on the couch, I wasn't really getting very nice lighting. So. I sort of just wandered around the room with my camera in my hand, trying to find somewhere that looks a bit nicer and also trying to find a single spot that has not a lot behind it. This is this is the best I could do. Um, this wall, because I'm like, that's where the two walls join, which I'm sort of attempting to hide a bit. Um, this wall with part of a picture, look, it's, it's little baby me who's like, Everyone look at me. I was, I, I liked attention as a child. Anyway, um, I was a younger child. I was like the youngest, so that's fair. Um, anyway, <laughs> that whole wall has pictures and then like right there <laughs> is the TV. Um, and over there, like, like literally I'm touching it, um, is my dad's like mini desk and computer for when he's working at home. Um, not like working at home um, because of COVID more, he's gone back to the office, but more so like when he's doing work in the evening, which he does all the time because his job has no work-life boundaries and apparently his boss can just contact him, him at 9 p.m. And yeah, anyway, um, the TV is there and I really didn't like the look of the TV in the back because it, it just, it just looked really strange. Maybe if there was like a nice like screensaver on it, then that would be okay. But I also was then worried that I would have a glare on TV anyway. So th this is um, called, the builders made the walls in our apartment because we bought off the plan. I don't know where my accent just went there for a second. We bought it off the plan um, and they made the walls quite thick. So on the other side of this wall is my bedroom, but there's like 15 centimeters between each wall. So my dad one day was, after a few cocktails, was sort of just like, I'm just gonna cut into the wall and we'll do an exploratory, you know, hole to see if we can put some cupboards in. So this is like recessed into the wall is eventually then what he did. Um, so now we have extra storage. That is a, I think it's port or toque. I don't know, I, I don't know which one. My dad likes wine. Anyway. This is the best I could do. It's not remotely knitting related in the background. I mean, maybe it would be if you were a knitter who likes to drink wine, but I'm underage, so that's not really fitting with the vibe, but that's okay because 
small apartment life, it's the best I can do. Um, I also had to then stack a whole bunch of books to get this set up to work um, because I'm sitting on a higher chair so that you can't see the desk and the TV. Uh, and then I had to wait for the washing machine to stop. It's like to finish its load because at the end of the like 40 minute cycle, the last like five, 10 minutes, it's really aggressive and it's in a cupboard. So like that's our laundry, it's a cupboard in the hallway. And it's like the washing machine, machine sort of jumps at the door, like it's trying to jump out. It's so aggressively spinning, it's trying to jump out of the cupboard. So then it bangs against the door for a solid five minutes. Um, by the way, I'm not complaining that my mum does all of our washing and bedding and ironing. I'm extremely grateful that she does that for us. And it's not her fault that the washing machine likes to get very aggressive in the last 10 minutes of its cycle. So anyway, my mum's probably gonna get home very soon and I'm now in the living room, which doesn't have a closable door. So I don't know how long this, this can be, but I have a lot to talk about. So how about I just get into the knitting? I do want to also mention that I only have one week of school holidays left before I start college, which most of my friends are not very excited for. I'm like ecstatic for it. Like I, I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I was finished with high school a little while ago and um, like mentally finished with it. And I just had some health stuff go not very well at the end of high school. So then that just was, it was quite a sluggish end to the year. I'm looking forward to the new school and new classes and a new orchestra that I got into. And so lots of fun things happening this year. It will be a busy year though. So technically my next podcast episode would be um, first weekend, like the weekend of week one, which I might be able to film for that uh, because probably wouldn't have done a whole lot of things that needed homework then to be done that weekend but yeah that might be okay and then yeah we'll see i might need to start doing just very short episodes where i kind of just briefly show you what i'm doing or i just focus more on instagram and doing little um instagram reels to try to kind of like show you progress on um on projects in like short little videos with music behind them so you can at least see like a bit more interesting ways of seeing my projects and how much progress I've made on them without me having to sit down and do the setup and make sure no one else is in the house and then edit the video and upload it and do the thumbnail and the show notes for the description box which does naturally take longer than an Instagram post that I could just edit while I'm sitting on the bus on the way to school or sitting on the couch after dinner so yeah, that's something I wanted to mention. Oh, show notes that I just referred to. Um, they will be in the description box below. If you haven't watched the episode before, I just list all of the things that I've talked about down there. So if you want to check out a yarn or a pattern that I've mentioned, it's all down there. Awesome. I realized after about a week after my last podcast episode went up on YouTube, I realized there was an entire project that I forgot to talk about. <laughs> Um, and that was my cinnabar sweater. So I knit a cinnabar sweater, which is a pattern by Rachel Ramo of Maven Crafted Designs. And I was fairly close to finishing it. I want to say, yeah, I paused on the body because I was trying to save yarn. So I was knitting the sleeves in the hopes that I'd have enough yarn to just use the rest for the body and it would be long enough. It wasn't long enough in the end. I did need another skein for like five centimeters of ribbing. And even though I wanted it cropped, like I, it it can't be so cropped that it's like sticking out over your boobs. Like that just doesn't really work. I did need the other ball, unfortunately. However, um, I was able to leave it at the shop so that other people can use the leftovers because I just wasn't sure what I'd use it for. So, I have shared photos of this on Instagram of me wearing it back when I finished it, which is now several weeks ago, which is why it's so funny that I haven't mentioned it here. But most of you, I'm going to assume watching this will follow me on Instagram. Maybe not. Maybe. I'm not sure. That will be linked in the description box if you're not. Ta-da! So, 
I made mine. This this pattern comes with a couple of versions, one of which is the sleeves. I think they're called bell sleeves in the pattern. Each pattern sort of refers to the um, sleeve options a bit differently. These are basically quite large sleeves that aren't decreased for its entirety. So it's knit with this large number of stitches and then the end is done um, with no ribbing. You do an I-cord bind off instead, which creates a really neat edge. It means that you end up with quite big sleeves around your wrist, which I quite like the look of personally. You can do normal sleeves, but it's like, I'm not gonna do normal sleeves. But like, seriously, if you wanna do normal sleeves, that's fine. I just, I. If there's a big sleeve option, I'm going to do the big sleeve option. The body you can do full length or cropped and you can add waist shaping as well. I didn't do any waist shaping um, because it's quite bulky. I didn't, I kind of wanted to hang off my body rather than hug it because I don't know, it's just quite bulky that way. That was just how I was feeling. Um, and I did make mine cropped, but I made mine extra cropped. I don't remember exactly how long it measures. I think the underarm to the hem, which is really short. Um, it was only about like seven and a half inches. What's that in centimeters? Like 20 centimeters maybe? No. Closer to 15? I have no idea. I'm trying to work it out based off the length of a ruler, which is 12 inches and 30 centimeters, but my brain's, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, I'm very happy with how this turned out. And I really like it both with um, very full checked skirts, but also over the top of dresses, which is how I like modeled it in the photos I posted of me wearing it. So that was another reason why I didn't do waist shaping is because depending on if I was wearing it with a skirt or a dress, I kind of wanted it to just work no matter what shape the skirt or the dress was. Most of my dresses are quite fitted in the bodice, fitted waist and then huge flared skirt and the same thing applies with my skirts. They usually sit quite high on my waist and will flare outward with quite a full skirt so this kind of works quite well. I've noticed that store-bought jumpers that are cropped and don't cinch in at the waist with big sleeves that's something I've gravitated towards, so I'm quite glad that I was able to knit myself one. I really recommend this pattern. It's one I've wanted to knit of Rachel's for a very long time, so I'm glad that I did, and it's all ready to be worn uh, this coming winter because it is very, very hot right now. I mean, it's actually not that hot. It's, it's been extremely mild summer here in, in where I live in Australia, but yeah, I think this week is going to be very hot to just to make up for how nice the weather's been this summer. I'm very happy with it and I'm going to stop talking about it before I say the phrase I'm very happy with it uh, another 15 times. Moving swiftly on because I've been chatting for 15 minutes and mum is due home from donating blood anytime soon. So the next project I'm going to talk about which I've sort of been showing you already is my Be Thankful cardigan. Now this is a pattern that I did show you in the last podcast episode. I hadn't done a lot of it, um, but because it's knit with a 10 ply weight yarn and quite large needles, it's working up very quickly. It's a pattern by Lily Kate France that I've been wanting to knit ever since I found her designs. And I'm doing mine in this fabulous, I wanna say it's like a moss green, I think I called it olive green in the last episode, but I it's not a warm, leaning yellow kind of green. It's more of a leaning, like dead leaves kind of green. <laughs> I think it's a fabulous color, whether it looks like dead leaves or not. Um, but I've done quite a lot since I showed it to you last. So, it's living in my fabulous project bag, which was made by Helen, who also works at the Wool Shed in Monaco, which is where I work, which was self-explanatory when I said word also in that sentence, but that's fine. Um, oh, this is quite handy. I've got a little table to put the things on. Anyway, can lead to getting distracted. So I have one sleeve. 
what I've done the body, let, let me backtrack to actually make sense. This is knit bottom up and then you do the front and the back sort of separately. I'm not making any sense today. <laughs> you knit up to where the uh, sleeve starts and then you do this front bit and then you do this front bit and the back, top half of the back. And then the shoulders are seamed with a three needle bind off. So you have live stitches on either side that you then bind off together, um, basically by holding the two needles of live stitches parallel. And then with the third needle, you knit into the front and the back, um, like the first stitch on the front needle and the back needle simultaneously. So you're knitting them and binding them off while seaming them. Um, it's a really, really good technique. The only thing is that because it's a bind off, um, like a traditional cast off, it does leave a ridge. So you can do it like Amy has in, not Amy, oh my God, where is Amy coming from? My brain really wants to say Amy. Her name's Lily. <laughs> um, like Lily has, she's made it a design feature. So on the shoulders, you get this like faux seam. Um, I've done a sleeve, you pick up stitches to do the sleeve and it's similar to Cinnabar in that it has a lot of stitches so it's quite a generous sleeve for quite a while until you get to this point and then you decrease a bit and then you decrease super drastically in at the cuff. So you end up with a slight balloon shape but it's not excessive. Which I think is good for something that's this thick. You, yeah, I don't know how it would look. I feel like it would be too much because it would be too structured um, at the sleeve. Although having said that, the fine line sweater that I made as a test knit for this same designer is done in a slightly thinner wool. Um, and that has a very sharp decrease at the end for the puffed sleeve. But I did feel like that was a significantly tighter gauge because it was done on smaller needles whereas this is done on slightly larger needles than I'd consider normal for a 10 ply. And then you've got two by one rib here to kind of match the ribbing at the hem, at the waistline. I have some extra ends here because I really love the tubular cast off but I didn't really know how to do it for two by one rib at the cast on at the hemline. So I just did a normal long tail cast on. And then at the cuff, I was like, oh, it's fine. I can do the cast off here um, with the tubular cast off and it'll just have two different cast offs, which I didn't think really bothered me. Looking back now, that would have really, really bothered me. But I started doing it and then went, Oh, except the reason I didn't do it at the hem was because it's two by one rib and I only know how to do the tubular cast off for one by one or two by two, I think are the ways you can do it. So yeah, anyway, I just did a normal cast off. It's fine. <laughs> um, then I've only just picked up stitches, like literally just picked them up. I haven't knit around at all yet um, for the second sleeve. And then there goes the pattern. Then I've just got the neck band um, to make with the buttonholes and then sew the buttons on. I will need to do some modifications to the buttonholes because my buttons are significantly larger than the ones that Lily uses for her sample. I will need to make some adjustments with that, but I don't think it'll really be an issue. Another little detail I wanna show you is that running underneath the arm you get this beautiful column of slip stitches and then pearls in between them. And that continues up the underside of the sleeve, that line all the way up to here, which I think just looks really cool. I don't know, I just really like it. It was a bit of a pain to try to keep track of because you do the slip stitches in the ribbing as well, but it's fine, <laughs> I made it work. So yeah, I've just got one sleeve and the button band, sewing on the buttons, and then it's done. So I feel like I'm achieving a lot with finishing all of these winter garments because normally I'm not this high achieving 
at this point of the year. Like normally in summer, I'm just working on random stuff, which is fine because it's still holidays and that's fun. And then I get to winter and I, I've made nothing for myself to wear. So I'm very excited to wear this one. I'll admit I haven't really touched it since finishing the first sleeve. I put the second sleeve stitches on the needles to mean that like I'd started it, but there's some other projects that have taken my attention, which I shall show you now. One other thing, um, I'm making the second side in this cardigan to give me a bit less ease and I've tried it on and I think it's really perfect. I think my gauge is maybe a little off or I just need to block it um, because it is a bit smaller than I thought it would be, but I am still glad that I didn't do the size that is technically recommended for my size based on the recommended um, amount of ease that you're meant to have because it is meant to be quite oversized but then it comes in a lot at the waist which kind of just freaks me out into feeling like you'd have like all this extra fabric at the bust and then really cinched in waist and like i know that like an hourglass figure is seem to be very flattering but only if it's not like made because there's too much fabric like that's not that's not quite what it's meant to be i don't know that's just in my experience <laughs> i think also because i have quite narrow shoulders so i've always found that if something was too oversized up the top it just made me look a bit out of proportions not that anyone is perfect proportions naturally but you know what I mean. Next project, I'm part way through a row. However, I feel like I should be forgiven for that because I, yeah, I don't even know how many stitches this thing has. Let me get the pattern. Hold on. And yes, I'm on a wheelie chair. It's the chair that sits next to my dad's um, little desk. So I was like, well, I can't bother to get another chair from another room. And there's a chair here already and it's a wheelie chair. So like, I mean, it's kind of one of those chairs that like wheels too far with any slight movement. It's the one that you sit on and then it like thrusts you back into a wall. Anyway, <laughs> this is the Taka Moana shawl by Rohan Knits. Um, I'm pretty sure the designer goes by Frenchie, if I'm not mistaken. This is a massive, massive shawl that's done with mainly in garter stitch. Um, and then it's got these five lace panels um, for like a, a border kind of thing. Um, now she made hers in silk, I think, um, and recommends substituting with cotton or linen for like a summer shawl. However, I, I overheat and I don't, I, yeah, I don't need shawls in summer or spring. I went for a wool option also because I'm about to lose a whole bunch of stitches. I bought a hand dyed fade set from Hannah of the Corner of Craft um, and her yarn brand is called Chromatic Yarns. So that's what I wanted to use for the lace stripes. Um, and this yarn is 100% merino wool. So that sort of just decided it that I'll make a merino wool shawl instead of a summer one. I think it would be lovely to do a summer one, but given how ginormous this is and it's knit not crocheted I think I would feel a bit sad to put this much time into it and then not wear it a lot I'd consider making a big shawl in crochet because I'm a lot faster at it so it's sort of hard to show you the shape because I'm doing it on a really big circular needle and I've got so many stitches all squashed up I think I'm probably at like 500 stitches about 450 stitches. That's a lot of stitches. So yeah, it sort of has like three sections. Um, and yeah, I, I've started the lace. I've done the first one, first lace section, and then I've just started the second one. And it's separated by a couple of rows of the first initial color in the garter stitch panel. So yeah, I've still got a bit to go, but oh my word, it is so nice to be onto lace now. I I really didn't, <laughs> I really wasn't enjoying this as much as I thought I was because it was just garter stitch, 
back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and I chose to do it in cream as the main colour because I knew I wanted to use these awesome like I mean, look how cool that is it's coming up all blue on the camera but it is actually purple these darker sections anyway I wanted to use these super bright colours and so I wanted the main colour to be a bit toned down let me get the other two balls from the fade set to show you I'm gonna be in a different spot every time I move because the chair is not stationary <laughs> okay these are the three colours and it goes like that obviously I love them so much I I yeah this is so cool I really like this colour um so I don't know which is which I have all the labels though so it was called the ice blue fade kit I want to say I think I bought it a while ago okay don't blame me for not remembering but it comes with three of Hannah's colors so Mero I believe is the darkest blue I want to say that this is ice mage and then ice dragon wormling is the lighter that and don't quote me on that but yeah, it's Mero, Ice Dragon, Wormling, and Ice Mage are the three colours. I don't remember which is which out of the two lighter ones. This has become so much more fun now that I'm on the lace and I'm using colour again. Like, yeah, it's going so quickly now. And I'm hoping this will be done soon because it might be nice to wear, I'm thinking like autumn kind of time, when I'm still wearing things that don't have sleeves but I want a giant shawl to wear instead. That's what I'm thinking. I don't think I really have anything else to say about this shawl. I'm really enjoying it, um, but I will admit it was a bit of a slog at the start. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> it, it was extremely repetitive at the beginning, but once I'm in the lace section, it's really fun. I think the sun is starting to go away a bit. It's getting a bit cloudy, so that's good because I've only got a couple of things left to talk about. Um, the next one, next project, is living in this teeny tiny little zipper project bag, which I only have one of because they really have to have a very small project. I usually prefer the big drawstring ones. However, this will be very useful for if um, I want to take a little bit of knitting to school, just like a sock or something or a little crochet thing. I am going to be teaching my first um, like solo class at work this, nope, not this coming weekend, weekend after. Um, so I have taught or assisted to teach with some of the other teachers at the Woolshed. This will be my first time doing it on my own. So I'm very excited because I'm gonna be teaching all things amigurumi crochet and I needed to make a booklet to give to the participants in the class. Um, and so I've written up all this booklet, like all of this information, all the tips and tricks about working amigurumi, um, which is the Japanese word for crochet or knitted stuffed toy. And usually um, people think of it as crocheted stuffed toys. I was going through the booklet and there were some techniques I wanted to take photos of um in a project so i've started a teeny tiny rabbit those legs need to sit a bit more like there and so far i've just got the head and the body which has worked as one piece and then two little feet so i still have the arms and the ears and then the face to sew on i'm going to probably sew one limb on and take photos of it for the booklet and then in the class I can sew another one on to show them in person how to sew them on because we're going to be making a crocheted octopus. Uh, it's going to be the pattern by Laura Eccleston of Happy Berry Crochet. Uh, Laura has actually stopped designing as of about a month ago. Uh, she said that she was a painter first um, and stopped that about 12 years ago and then took up crochet designing 
um, but now has felt more inspired by painting than crochet. So she's gone back to painting, which is very exciting for her. So she has stopped designing, but she has still got really, really amazing designs. Um, so many crocheted designs on her website and her YouTube channel. I always recommend her to people who come in the shop asking for crochet patterns because it, it people don't seem to come in for crochet as much as they do for knitting so we don't have as many knit, uh, crochet patterns uh, so often I'll recommend online options and she's always one that I recommend and this rabbit pattern is one of hers as well but the octopus that we're making which we'll make through the class uh, doesn't have any limbs to sew on which is why I chose it because I have found that sewing on limbs is the fiddliest part and it's the hardest part to make look neat. You can kind of hack at it with a needle and some thread but it's going to be the part of the toy that shows the most wear and tear or just shows where something wasn't done very neatly. So I thought we'll start with something that doesn't have that component. Uh, we'll still be learning about how to construct a toy and different techniques used, specific stitches, different yarns to use and the kind of tension you need to achieve to not have stuffing show through and things like that. But this rabbit is something that I also wanted to show them as kind of a next step because overall it is a lot smaller and it does have this really cool construction where you work the head and then you immediately work the body like it's all attached so I think this would be a good challenge for the next project and naturally these tiny little teeny tiny little booties are quite fiddly. I think it'd be a really great project. I'm using, I want to say it's like from Sessia, it's maybe like Bio Sessia 5 or something like that. It's like a 5 or 6 ply, maybe Quidlean to 4 ply cotton. And then I've paired it with what I think is a yarn from Rico. I think it's like Essentials Cotton DK. I, oh, I've already started an arm. Um, I made a lot of crocheted pencil cases in preparation for year seven. And I bought just heaps and heaps of this cotton yarn from a UK site, because it came in lots of colors and it was pretty cheap. Um, and I have some left over from making those pencil cases many years ago. And it's a really nice yarn for amigurumi crochet. So yeah, that is that little project. I'm hoping that we finish soonish so that I can finalize all the booklet. I still have a week before the class. I'd like to get the booklet done this weekend so that I can make sure that it's all good to go. And there's nothing else that I need to get for the class. I also just realized I am actually wearing knitwear. I'm wearing my Park Ruffalo top, which I will stand up to show you. So it has a ruffle <laughs> and it's a very simple tank top. It's got a um, high back, which I really like. And it's very fitted and I knit mine in 100% cotton. It was knit in an eight ply or DK weight yarn. So it worked up very quickly. I think if I wanted to knit it again, I'd maybe do a different size for the waist to make the ruffle a little more defined. I feel like the ruffle's not as roughly as I'd hoped, but everything else fits really well. Like I feel like it's not slipping off my shoulders. It's not so tight at the bust that it's like straining stitches or showing your bra underneath. Like I feel like it's quite a comfortable fit, but I would like to modify the ruffle just a little bit to make it a little more ruffly. But I was saying that to my mum this morning and she's like, well, I think it's fine. So who knows? I realized as I was about to show you this future project that I just got yarn for. Last episode, I was all very excited about my Midnight Dancer socks, which are um, a plain sock pattern with a ruffled ankle, like ruffle ankle hem thing uh, by Sari Nordland. I finished the first sock and it was too big. Like just, it was just too big. So I have since ripped it out quite sadly. And I do plan on re-knitting it and just going down a size to the 56 stitch 
sock because I was having a look and I think that will actually fit me really well. And I also think I want to do a heel flap and gusset instead of a short row heel because after putting it on, even though it was the wrong size, I think I'll probably wear it with ankle boots more than my heels just because my heels actually fit too well to be able to have a thick sock in, but my boots have a little more wiggle room. So because I'd be wearing it with boots, I'd want a little bit of a sturdier heel like the heel flap and gusset just so that if it's getting a bit more hard wear inside a boot, it's not going to get a hole around the heel. So in all fairness, it it will be fine, but I don't know when I'll be bothered to try and seam that again because I haven't started the sock yet. Anyway, I have always had my eye on this pattern by, oh gosh, who's it by? I'm not sure where this designer is from, so, I might not pronounce her name right, but Lavanya Patricia or Patricella depends on where she's from as to if you say the L or not, I don't know. But it's the Stitch Witch socks, which are basically very long socks that have stripes. I'm very, very excited about these and I've got some yarn in preparation to make them. So I'm going to be doing them in these two colours. So I've got Lang Yarns Jarble Magic in uh, 1404, I think is the colour. And it's sort of like a black sock yarn that changes to a slight grey. And then this yarn is Malabrugo Sock in 120 Lotus. which is a tonal purple mauve kind of shade. I will need two boards of each. So it's gonna be a bit of an expensive pair of socks, but I already had one of these and I am buying them at my work where I do get a discount. So it, it sort of makes up for it, um, but they're gonna be some, some luxurious socks. I saw this pattern and I just really wanted some some very long socks. It is technically knit for an eight ply or a DK weight yarn. So I'm just gonna hold these each double to make gauge. Okay, I just bumped my camera and it sort of fell as I was putting that yarn away. So I think that's a sign that, oh, I've already been filming for 43 minutes. Um, Yeah, that's a sign that this has gone for long enough. I'm very excited to knit those socks. I don't know when I will, I think, yeah, it's tricky because I'll just be knitting around and around for all of the leg, but I'll need to be taking two balls of yarn with me. So it sort of works for a travel project in that it's a simple pattern, but not a travel project in how much yarn I have to take with me everywhere with it. So I'm not sure. I think I might start the scarf for my uncle and do that as my like taking to school project because that will only need one small ball of yarn at each time that I'm using it. So I think that might be a bit easier, but I definitely am feeling more inspired by the Stitch Witch socks than by the Midnight Dancer socks. I think after being a bit sad that they didn't fit, I think I'll just let it like sit for a minute in my stash and I will come back to them eventually. But I think it's fine to wait, like, well, it's not gonna end if I don't knit that pair of socks right now. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed the podcast episode and found the new setup, the new new setup somewhat okay. Do let me know if this is better than at the couch. I just felt like, I don't know, you couldn't really see things while I was at the couch. That's my mum coming home. Um, but anyway, if you did enjoy the podcast, then do feel free to like the video and subscribe. All the show notes are in the description box below. And I'll see you in my next episode.